Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, we indeed we are indeed honored to have our guest, uh, Mr. Mahmoud Sabali, to deliver on the topic the secularization of education in Alison Motorcycle Ban. Mr. Mahmoud Sabali has a set of experience he had in the former presidential years had been a former senior central bank of gambia been a former director of the ministry of finance and economics of yes he has also been the former director of the gambia radio and television services and has been the former director and editor-in-chief of the company i CEO of independent consultancy uh without much time i do uh, we will be honored to give Ali the ground to greet our dear participants and open the floor. So, okay, thank you, Mr. Charles. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I greet everybody here, the host and the participants in this uh, seminar. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we thank God that it's happening because it was cancelled the last time and uh, I almost cancelled it this time also because um, uh, I had a funeral, a colleague passed away, so I, I did ask Mr. Chow to, to make it a short one uh, so that I could attend to those other social issues. But I'm uh, really excited and interested in the topic you've chosen, the secularization of education in allusion to moral societal bankruptcy uh, i think it's a very important topic and uh, your topic happens to be so loaded that it looks like you've already inserted the conclusion into the under the theme of the seminar that's uh, moral societal <laughs> bankruptcy and uh, i guess it's uh, because of the fact that it's obvious that uh, the secularization of not only our uh, education but all segments of our lives we only lead to moral bankruptcy because it's my personal conviction that morality, uprightness uh, cannot be sustained if it is not grounded in the sacred, in religion. Uh, and I think there's enough empirical evidence to, to support that. Uh, to start with, uh, since I believe we are pre predominantly Muslim, even though when I speak of uh, secularity, I speak for all faiths, uh, including uh, Christianity and other faiths, because um, the secular, what I call the secular fundamentalist, fundamentalist ethos, is not just against Islam, it's against all religion. What they're trying to do is to trivialize religion and uh, remove religion from our lives, which, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as a Muslim, is completely unacceptable uh, for a people who would say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. That's, uh, we come from Allah and to him is our return. Uh, that is not a statement that we just utter when there is a loss. It's a statement that we live because that is the reality that Allah has created us. Uh, he has created us to worship him. So there is a purpose for the creation of the human being. That's for worship, as for cultivation of this earth. And Allah has uh, brought us in here as his uh, vicegerent. Uh, sorry, I just got a call there. Uh, perhaps I will just break a bit to put my phone on airplane mode so they don't interrupt me. Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. All right, thank you. Sorry, sorry for that. I, I forgot to put my my, my phone on, on airplane mode. Okay, by the way, that's a call for another event I'm supposed to attend. <laughs> um, so what was I saying? A human being is created for a purpose and we are uh, the vicegerents on this half here. So we are not here for ourselves. We did not create ourselves. And, and our affairs are not in our hands. Our affairs are in the hands of the creator. The creator who created us with a purpose and then gave us what I call the owner's manual. 
Now, would you know what, what that is? As far as I'm concerned, the owner's manual is the Holy Quran. And by extension, all authentic uh, sacred scriptures. And uh, it is that Quran that governs my life as a Muslim. And I'm assuming yours as Muslims too, or whichever sacred scriptures that you subscribe to, those are your owner's manuals. So you cannot remove those things from the bedrock of your education or, or your social life. Uh, if you go back to this uh, owner's manual here that we are talking about, uh, we all know the first verse revealed in the Holy Quran. Uh, what verse is that actually? Because the usual answer is a, is a shortened answer. I, I just got a reminder from one of my chefs that the first bar verse revealed is actually not Iqra. Yeah, you're staring at me. It's, it's not Iqra. It's Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. Now, that's very deep. If you say Iqra, that's one thing. But the verse in the Surah Alaq is Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. So we are supposed to read, to study, to ponder, to contemplate, to recite in the name of our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if that is our first injunction, to read, to study, the primary purpose of our studies should be to find the pleasure of Allah. Does that mean we'll just study to go and, and do the salah and the zikr? No, our purpose, according to a top scholar, can be summarized in two things, to worship Allah and to be of service to Allah's creation. So if you are reading to earn knowledge, knowledge that should be useful, you cannot and should never allow that to be secularized. Because if you take the sacred out of knowledge, that knowledge, what happens? It may end up hurting you. If you take the sacred out of knowledge, what does it produce? It produces the atomic bomb. It produces a third world war. It produces Russia versus Ukraine. Because all those weapons created and being used and abused, we are products of knowledge. But where they, was that kind of knowledge based in the ethos of the sacred, of our purpose to worship Allah, to seek knowledge, to serve, to, to serve worship Allah, and to be of service to his creation? And the sad thing about this secularity thing, it, it's not just education. I know education is my, is my topic here, but it's, it's as a versed uh, attack on everything that has the sacred, to take the sacredness out of it. In education, it's about removing meaning out of education and uh, reducing human beings to uh, re 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 reducing, re reducing human beings to resources, so that resources are diverted from the the humanities, for instance, towards the sciences and towards vocational education, because they re re they regard the human being as a resource that can be used abused and dumped. Now I attended a seminar uh, with uh, some West African youth leaders in, uh, in Sierra Leone about two, three years ago. And one of my co-panelists is a, is a top technology guy. By the way, I'm not against technology, let me make that clear. I'm, I'm using an Apple, both my phone and the iPad are Apple. You know, I'm, I'm, I love tech, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't worship tech. I use tech to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to serve humanity, like I am being of little service to you here. So back to the panel, my tech guy said, he said, uh, the solution to all our problems is technology. He said, Africans are talking about farming and fishing. You know, he says, all that is uh, balderdash, you know. He said, this, you know, he, he was so vociferous about this, you know, so I, he came from the one extreme and I, I responded from the other extreme. So I told him, actually, technology is actually the cause of all our problems. It's not a solution, it's a problem. And I narrated this anecdote of, uh, sorry, any Fana Fana here. They say it's a Fana Fana guy. Well, the, the, the audio that came is Fana Fana. Ciao, I hope I'm not offending you. He said uh, he sent a message to his father up country uh, by Renman Duma Munyonyo Bay Tolman, the Maboka WhatsApp, WhatsApp group, you Barila Boka. So he said he's in so many WhatsApp groups and he doesn't have time. He has to respond to all these messages. So that's tech, misunderstood, misapplied, misused. So I told the guy there, I said, your technology is actually the problem, it's not the solution. But there is an explanation to that. And it goes back to your topic, 
the secularization of not just education, but everything. If education is based on the sacred, on purpose, so you can train people to be scientists, to be tech people, but their ups and their gadgets will serve humanity, not destroy humanity. I know in the Gambia, there's this craze on what they call coding. Everybody should do coding, coding. Yeah, I said, I mean, our children should never be taught to code until they are told, they are taught about authentic codes of ethics. Because if you're taught to code in a secular way, devoid of the sacred, devoid of meaning, whatever you're going to code could end up hurting humanity, destroying lives. We know what happened to uh, this whole secular ethos. And, you know, ironically, ironically, if you talk of education and secularity and you think of America, countries like America, you know, uh, Harvard University, for instance, which is perhaps the, the quintessential leading modern educational institution, what is the history of Harvard? If you look at Harvard University, uh, it is America's oldest learning institution founded in, nine, in 1636. At its inception, this university was named New College and its purpose was mainly to educate clergy. What's clergy? Religious people. In 1639, the school's name became Harvard University and it was named after Reverend John Harvard who bequeathed his wealth to create this institution. So go back to all these modern institutions, you'll find out that at their inception, they were created and rooted in the sacred. But there is now a, a, a craze and, and a global conspiracy to, 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 to secularize everything. So but what, what happens at the end of the day, you have all these Ivy Leagues who think now that, well, it, uh, uh, the sacred is not important, they produce Wall Street uh, moguls, CEOs that end up giving us the global financial and economic crisis. I am sure without it that it's partly the reason is the education was tilted away from the sacred into the secular. And what's sad about this, uh, this secular attack, and, and I call them, these people who do this, I call them secular fundamentalists. They even trying to secularize religion. Now, did you hear that? Didn't that sound crazy? Yes. It's, it's not hyperbole. They're trying to secularize uh, even religion. Now they talk about spirituality. I'm a spiritual person, but I'm not religious. My friend, religion, religion cannot be secular. The spirit cannot be secular. But there's such a, 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 a vast and a very powerful media backing to this that before you know it, your own brothers and sisters start buying into this kind of ideologies because they're being brainwashed and being reprogrammed subliminally. subliminally, subliminally. So you see people say, well, I mean, you ask for anything, the universe will give it to you. Thank the universe. What's the universe? Who created the universe? Is the universe an end in itself? So these are all efforts to, to, to secularize our lives. I, I'll make reference to an essay I wrote that was published on December 28th, 2029 by the Standard newspaper uh, when there was this debate about secularity in this country. I'll just uh, quote one or two paragraphs from that. Uh, if you want the full article, you could go to online. It's online, it's Standard newspaper, December 20th, 2019. The title is the, what was the, what's the title again? So, on the matter of secularity, the attempt to oppress the majority. That's the title of the article. Part of my arguments there is, and I quote, there is a whole veil surround, surrounding the meanings and tradition of secularity. But we know that secularization, and I'm quoting here, I'm quoting Professor Said Muhammad Al-Attas in his thesis, Secularization and the Crisis of Identity. Quote, Secular, secularization is a process which is definitely opposed to religion. It is a philosophical program or an ideology that seeks to destroy the very foundation of religion. Unquote. These are the words of Professor Said Muhammad al attas in his thesis, Secularization and the Crisis of Identity. I think it's a very powerful reference material you may, you may want to look at. Uh, it's sure. actually, uh, uh, this book was donated to me by Dr. Mohammed Jah Sr. Maybe if you want to have access to the book, 
you can contact him. Uh, you know, that's Dr. Jad Jr., that's Dr. Jad Senior. This senior uh, is the one who gave me this. He does this Mimbarul Noor on the QTV. And I'm going ahead quoting from this essay. There is a whole, okay. We have seen how the insidious notion of secular, secularity continues to deprive people of their rights to express their religious beliefs in countries known as the champions of democracy, liberty and equality. I'm referring to France actually, where you are not allowed to uh, overly display religious symbols like veils in the name of democracy. So my argument is in our country, we do not want such nations and their extensions to impose their disguised religion of secularity on us. Now that's a paradox because I'm calling secular, secularity the new religion of the West. And by the way, if I say the West, I'm not saying all the West. In America, you have uh, top colleges that are rooted in, 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 in the sacred uh, uh, to it, uh, colleges like Brigham Young University from the Christian tradition, even the Jewish. But our problem in this part of the world Somebody talks about something in the West and we think it's, it's from Allah himself and we have to accept it. These things are questionable. If some professor or some congressman from America comes and tries to secularize your education or your life, refer, by him, to, refer, refer him back to the Bible Belt. There are parts of America that would never accept this kind of uh, thinking. Unfortunately for our Policymakers, whatever comes from the US World Bank, IMF, they take it. This is one of our problems. And now, talking about the secular and the West also, uh, I think some of our problems is that those of us who are young of age and we hear of the Albert Einsteins, the Thomas Jeffersons, uh, you name them, all these great scholars from the West, uh, Nietzsche, Benjamin Franklin, you name them. You name them. And we think they are the epitome of excellence in knowledge. But the fact that these people took a lot of knowledge from our people, uh, from, from top scholars in our tradition, uh, to with Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, Jalaluddin al-Rumi. And, and Rumi happens to be, I understand, the best read poet in the United States of America. But what do they do now? Then even Rumi, they try to secularize him, his poetry. They try to take away meaning. They take to, try to take away the secret and have their own interpretations. So these are some of the reasons why I really uh, happy about the, you guys bringing up this topic because these are issues happening at a very deep level. And if we don't bring them to the fore and discuss them and guard ourselves against these uh, psychological and cultural attacks, before we know it, we'll be consumed by it. And uh, the, the secular thing and our obsession with the, the West as if they are the only ones who know knowledge, the only ones who know science. You know, the West has certain problems that we don't have, and we have to understand that. These people went through some dark ages that were darker than uh, those of the continent they call the dark continent. They were in all sorts of voodoo and witchcraft, and they dismissed science completely until the Enlightenment and the Renaissance came upon them. So what happened to them was, and, and some of their religions, Some of the religions that, sorry, that's another call. Some of the religions that they were prof, prof, uh, professing did not resonate with science. So they saw religion as opposed to science. But it's our religion, Islam, and our sacred book, the Quran, is it antithetical to science? I think the Quran is not against science and Quran actually validates and confirms a lot of scientific principles. Sure. If, if you go to uh, Surah Muminun, for instance, from verse 12 to 14, where Allah talks about uh, embryology, these are things stated in our holy book like more than 1,400 years ago before the West discovered it. I know uh, the issue of fingerprints, which the West claims to have discovered also if you go to Surah Al-Qiyamah in the Quran. Verse for Bala Kadirina, Allah and Nusawiya Bananahu. Just to quote a few of those major miracles of science that they talk about, which their own religious texts at the time might have opposed, our religious texts actually confirmed and presaged this. And I am not one of those apologists to say that 
uh, Quran is authentic because science authenticates it. No, I say science is authentic because Quran authenticates it. If there is a divergence between what the Quran and science says, then for me, it's science that is wrong, so they need to do more research. Sure. And I can say that with a lot of confidence, because I'm an economist, and uh, in my field, when this global financial crisis happened, a lot of our theories were dismantled, and we had to go to the drawing board, and I'm sure similar things happened in, 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 this, in, in the scientific field. So my thesis is uh, uh, education cannot and should not be secularized. Because education, that's beneficial to the human being who believes in God, that education has to be rooted in the secular, in, in, in the sacred, astaghfirullah. So knowledge itself is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you cannot get that and push Allah out of it. It will, it will become a curse on you and not a blessing. In conclusion, uh, the problem of secularization of not just education, but everything, I believe is a, there's a motive behind it. It's to fight religion, especially our religion, Islam. And when I say that, us also as Muslim students, potential scholars and policymakers, we need to dig deeper into our religious tradition to understand it better. The secular push, secularization of education in countries like Pakistan got a huge impetus after, after the 9-11 attacks because they saw that the, uh, those alleged terrorists were from the madrasas. So uh, there is some kind of a motive. So there's this kind of movement that made people, especially the West, to start fearing Islam and Quranic education and secret education. So for me, uh, I'm not an apologist to any institution, not to the West, but us also as Muslims, we need to do some soul searching to understand our religious tradition better. I am not taking my religion from, from a kingdom that's less than 300 years old when my tradition, which is vast from the Arabian Peninsula to Asia to China to Africa, is vast and over 1,400 years ago. I'm not taking doctrine from a 200-year-old two, uh, uh, kingdom that celebrates their founder's birthday for, for a national day and it tells us uh, about the Islam. I'm not taking my religion from them. I'm taking my religion from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Quran and the Sunnah. But I know also I am not an authority. I seek knowledge from people who know. I am not at the University of Google. I look for authentic chefs who teach me the reality and the truth about religion. I need to be careful about the sources of knowledge, especially in this internet age. Uh, incidentally, I did a lecture at the uh, International Open University's 10th anniversary. And my topic was about the internet, something related to, to relating to that. So we need to be careful where we pick, what, what sources we use for our knowledge. And we need to operate our religion with humility that we don't know all and nobody knows all. And we try to learn from people who know. And to go ahead, because we are all da'is, whether we practice it actively or not. You do da'a by calling people, your actions as a Muslim or the lack thereof. Is, is propagating Islam in its own way. But my cardinal verse when it comes to that and to most things is the word of Allah. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. I, I'm not sure I did justice to the topic, but there's a time constraint, but I'm, I'm honored to have been able to sit down here and share some few thoughts with you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Indeed, you have indeed uh, given the topic the justice that it is uh, well expounded on the given topic. And I guess our dear participants can attest to such. Yeah. Uh, we will now have the interactive session, which is the question and answer session. But before we read some questions from our dear participants, uh, you may many points that I think are very significant, uh, strengthening to readdress. Yeah, you make yes. mention of uh, secularization of other civilizations. They say this yeah. secularization of uh, in Sena, so Avicenna in Roman bibliography. You made mention of Jalaluddin al Rumi being Romanized or being secularized. Do you think mm -hmm. there is a certain more, certain conspiracy with regard to such? No, absolutely. The, the West has its motives and its grand agenda that they want to propagate and uh, 
I will have to say this. I don't know whether you guys are brave enough to hear some of these things. The concept of uh, homosexuality, for instance, that they want to make acceptable. They know that if we are going about our authentic secret text, there is no way that such things could be approved and made normal in society. So whatever, and, and this, uh, some, some of these homosexuals, they drive international policy. They head major multinational corporations. So, so long as religion is authentic as it is, they cannot push some of these agendas. They want a monoculture. They want everybody to behave like robots and to buy their new phones and gadgets and to consume their movies and their candies. A people that's rooted in the sacred cannot buy into those babes easily. So you have to reduce the human being to a human resource, to a human robot to be able to do these things. So you get into the educational curriculum and that's why I'm so happy with your, with your topic because I believe, uh, hopefully I'll get elected into the National Assembly. I'm not here to campaign anyway, I'm going there for a purpose. I believe our educational curriculum very soon, the West will try to influence it, to, 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 to step it down, to secularize it, so that you cannot even teach young people that Allah said that homosexuality is not good. I believe that is a grand, grand design, a grand conspiracy. These things are not happening by accident. Well, I think uh, given reference to the place have met to Allah, so will there be any linkage to, to, to such a promise that Iblis had met an happiness of such? Uh, like you've made mention that secularity is something that is new. You can be rebut or the bad of secularity, tracing it a few centuries ago, let's say two, two centuries. And the religion had been something that had been in existence since inception, uh, since the genesis of mankind. So will there be any linkage between this? Well, I think the ayah just uh, encapsulates everything. It just describes the, the whole thing. I, I don't think there could have been a, a better ayah because uh, God created us, made us sacred, uh, brought us here, like I said, with the owner's money, well, do this, don't do this. But then Satan made a proclamation, and you know who the devil works with. I think the ayah just, just does it for me perfectly well. Surah Nisa. Interesting, it's in Surah Nisa. So, uh... And uh, because I think a, a lot of the attack to, to reduce the human being, uh, excuse me, my sisters, no offense, but they, they try to attack a lot our, our, our ladies to try to make them objects, to try to sexualize them, to throw away the veil, to use them on billboards. And uh, the sacredness and the authenticity of the human race, I believe, is anchored in the wombs of our mothers. If the women are uh, pushed, for instance, I don't like female football, and I'm not apologizing to anybody for that. I believe, I believe our bodies are differently made. I don't believe a, a, a man is better than a woman. But our rules are different. A man is not a woman and a woman is not a man. So uh, I think uh, I'm just picking up on your eye and the fact that it's situated in, in Surah Nisa. God is not frivolous. He does things for a reason. Uh, that womb there, that's where they're attacking us. And that's why we need all of us. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, just talking about our ladies because if the ladies are good and the boys are not good, that the boys will make the girls good. So it's all of us. We all need to take heed. We all need to uh, be on the guard against uh, this uh, attack on our nature as encapsulated in the eye you quoted. Sure. So uh, knowing all this, uh, knowing the ground that we stand, uh, what do you think should be the front? What do you think should be the part in terms of psychological battle? Education. What do you think? Well, the, 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 battle the battle starts right here on, on your phone. And, you know, incidentally, I'm using my iPhone because I could not open your link on my iPad. So, but the attack is on the phone. It's, it's the TV now. It's the, it's the chip in our, in, our, in our heads, literally. Ideas, right? so, yeah, I mean, uh, but, but the good thing is that we're doing the counter attack on our phones here to expose the, the malicious... Uh, underlying conspiracies and plans to demean us, to, to, to bring us down to be lower, uh, as the Quran would say, as far as Safi. It's quite sad and, and disheartening. Uh, 
That's what Allah said. And then what? Thumma radannahu asfala safilin. Allahu Akbar. So we'll have to be able to reinforce our own mental antibodies through forums like this, through creating awareness so that our young people will know that all that glitters is not gold. And that there will be no knowledge that is new, authentic and beneficial to human beings. That is not in the Quran. And when I speak of the Quran, I speak of all the authentic sacred books as the ayah says, Musaddiqan lima bayna so it's, it's, it's a summation of everything. Everything is in there. So they should not be able to bamboozle us with any new theories or discoveries. And a lot of the theories that they celebrate uh, decades later, they find faults in them. But what did Allah say about this book? But he said, Alif Lamim, Dalikal Kitabula Rebafi, Hudan Lil Mutakin. And then he says, What? Why in Kuntum Fi Rebin Mima Nazalna Allah Abdina, Fatu Bisuadi Mithi. Who has tested that? Who was able to make that challenge? So we need to build our self-esteem and know that we have gold. You have the Quran is the gold standard. So you, you should not feel inferior to anybody. And like I mentioned in my lecture earlier on, this thing about all these Western scientists, like you call them Steve Jobs or Albert Einstein or Newton. And we have scholars who, who outspark these people like more than a thousand years ago. But we don't know our, the history of our tradition. That's our problem. So we need to look back. We need to have conversations with our learned scholars so we know what obtained in the past. Uh, because Bob Mali says, if you know your history, then you'll know where you're coming from. And then you would not stop to ask me, who the heck do you think I am? We know who we are. We are Muslims, Abdullah. But we take instruction from, from Allah. We are not slaves to any civilization or human beings or systems. And we are not robots. Sure. sure. So uh, in summary, uh, this is an intellectual battle that we must fight on all, all fronts. Emphasize on the, on the point that I've made mention. I have been a quite victim of that. Uh, I remember reading psychology and shifting to the piece of psychology and then uh, having uh, references like uh, room, having references like Amicena, not knowing that this is mm -hmm. Ibn Sena, the great biologist, the great, the great chemist, uh, reading uh, through and then, you see, reading and then seeing room reference. This is Jalaluddin Rumi, the great yes. chemist and then the biologist. Well, I think this is an intellectual but that you must be ready for. We have everything in ground. We have everything that we might need. We have the Quran, which is a project that is still standing. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, this is quite an important point. Sure. Probably we will take uh, questions from the chat box. Uh, the this one said, I really enjoyed your lecture, Mahmoud Sabali. I have also been anticipating a bit and learn from you. I regularly follow you on LinkedIn and some social media platforms. Will you say yes, uh, the line is breaking? Sure, he says, will you say the educational system in the Gambia has been secularized? Well, not yet. Not yet. Uh, I believe we still have a lot of the secret within our educational system. But like I said, I believe the West is very soon going to try to change what's happening in our educational system. And unfortunately, from education to health to economics, we don't, we don't build homegrown policies. We take our policies from the UN, from the IMF, from the World Bank, and the West, they are secularizing their education. So automatically, it's going to filter down. And that's why a a forum like this is so critical so that we get ready. And like I said, people like me, I'm going to the National Assembly for some of those things. I'm not campaigning, I repeat. I don't think you are in my constituency. But I think these are the places where we need to have people who believe in our culture and our religion because these things will come. Wallahi, write, that, write it down in your, in your diary. The secularity issue, the constitution, where did it die in the National Assembly? Where was it going to be approved, approved there? 
So if we care about our religion, our culture, and authenticity, we need to we need to take the decision to 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 seek public office. And if I say public office, I don't mean just elected office to go and apply and serve in the public service, uh, PMO, Ministry of Education, you know, Ministry of Health. We need people who are rooted in the sacred, who know the importance of the sacred, and who are willing to defend the sacred to serve in our public institutions, even international institutions. We have uh, one of our participants say, you say increased secularization may result in societies forgetting any benefits associated with religious beliefs and participation or results in higher engagement in riskier behavior, example, drug and alcohol consumption. Can you summarize the question? The, the reception is not okay. very good. Sure. Sure. Please. Uh, I think you say, uh, will you say, by your opinion, will you say the increase in polarization may result in moral societal bankruptcy, as the topic clearly say, the usurpation of alcohol, the usage of drugs, the increase, the hierarchy in usage of drugs, and so on, and societal vices. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, because, uh, like I said in my opening remarks, I believe that morality, which is uh, encapsulated in your title, morality and uh, decency and uprightness can only be sustained if it is rooted in the sacred. So we get on these loose tracks with the secularization. There was a time in our society here, for instance, Nobody goes to a nursery school. Most people don't go to nursery school. You go to religious schools. You go to Dara. You go to Karanta. Sure. Your, most of us, you know, your education starts at the primary school when you would have had a, a background of religious education. But now our kids go to nursery school at year one. They want to take my son. I'm in Kenington. So he's about 14 months. I said, no, not now. <laughs> So, so, yeah, because, I mean, what do they call this Western education? Anybody bunkers here? We call it Tubabu Karamo. The reason why our, our elders refused in the beginning to send our people to Tubabu Karamo was these things, was this injection of secularity. So we, we, need to, we need to look at our history, man. I mean, I'm just saying this, and it's becoming a light bulb moment for me right now, just off the cuff. My elder sister didn't go to Bintar Sabali because my, my, my parents say, no, I did have Tubabu Karamo. <laughs> so we have uh, this from Sister Sabina from YouTube Life. Uh, from YouTube Life, she said, "I am very interested in sexuality, Islam. Some of the is something else. But what books can I read? I find books reading Muslims, but it's shady." In terms of references to issues regarding uh, sexuality, I, I would, uh, I have not read much like books, but I've, I've listened a lot of, to a, a lot of lectures. Uh, I, I would recommend, for instance, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, who has uh, thousands of lectures online on YouTube, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. I, I'm not sure he would, uh, I'm not even sure I've ever listened to a full lecture on sexuality, but when I listen to any lecture, I focus on the, uh, on the segments that touch on some of these issues that I think the West is attacking us to weaken our morality and, and the sacred. Well, Shayam Zayuzuf would be, would be good too. Because the issue of sexuality is a bit sensitive. What they do here is, uh, there's this fight against patriarchy. And uh, yeah. for me, there's a problem inherent in that. I, I'm, I'm happily married with children and everybody who knows me, I support my wife a lot. Recently, I. There was a picture of me at the market shopping for my wife. My political opponents shared it and they tried to make me look bad. They didn't know I, I put those things on social media myself. I believe uh, our men need to be kinder to our women. We need to be fairer to our women. You know, we are not better than them. They are not our slaves. But I also believe uh, the West is trying to take advantage of some of these issues in the name of feminism and women's liberation to, to just alter the entire setup of the the, 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 the feminine hum, human being. Like I said, a man is not a woman, but a woman is not also a man. Uh, so so they, they have these things uh, uh, to fight against patriarchy. I mean, I had, in fact, last time, was I doing a lecture or something? I said, when you look at the etymology of these words, and when you listen to these people or read them, 
look deep into the words they use, patriarchy. When you talk of patriarchy, who, patriarchy, well, whatever you, whatever you pronounce it. When you talk about the patriarch, who do you, who comes to mind? It's Ibrahim alayhi salam. So if you're fighting patriarchy, you're fighting the patriarch, you're fighting Ibrahim, and then Allah tell, tells uh, our prophet alayhi salam, what tabi millata Ibrahim hanifan, wa ma kana min al So, I mean, there are, there are a lot of subtle issues going on. But on sexuality, again, um, I'd recommend, check out Hamza Yusuf. And I know there are a lot of lectures, Zaytuna College, for instance, they have their YouTube links. And a lot of the time they have these female uh, professors do lectures. But what I do is uh, whichever book I read, whether it's religious or not, whichever lecture I uh, listen to, I try to pick up some of these themes like uh, secularity, like sexuality, and uh, some of these uh, uh, other issues that uh, they find very easy to attack us. I hope that's useful. Sure. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, Tabali, what will be your closing remarks? I just want to thank you and encourage you to, to keep up the good work you're doing. Uh, institutions don't make scholars. Yeah, am, am I good to go? Yeah, sorry, before you conclude, before you conclude the remark, I just want to ask perhaps. If it can be quick, really. Uh, yes. Uh, Thanks, thanks for your time. And uh, uh, I believe what you said, uh, policy makers have a critical role. They have a vital role to play in that. Um, what do you think um, should have been the stand of the policy makers uh, in changing the dynamics? Uh, for instance, uh, the West having the, the future plans of uh, secularizing the education system, targeting the, uh, the young generation. Uh, what do you think, as policymakers, you know, what should be their stance to make sure that they change the dynamics? Well, their stance, I know we are a pre predominantly religious society, Muslim and Christian. So by default, their stance is to maintain the sacred and to re reject the secular fundamentalist uh, jihad against religion. I hope you heard that. I said there's a secular fundamentalist jihad against religion and against the sacred. The problem is, uh, uh, I was, uh, mashallah, uh, Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service. I was the boss of all the public workers in this country at some point. And I know uh, a lot of these people, they uh, trying to fight some of these battles. It's not a priority for them. And that's why I, I poked you guys towards the direction of thinking of serving in public office uh, with this level of INS generated here. And I'm, at some level, you can't even blame them much. Did they have the opportunity to come up with seminars like this? No. Do they have the resources? I mean, an institution like yours that's rooted in the sacred, maybe they didn't have the opportunity. But we can learn from the mistakes of the past and uh, try to avoid it by taking the right steps. Like I said, serving in public institutions. In conclusion, I just want to thank you, congratulate you, and commend you for, for the series. I saw a lot of uh, some flyers. I saw uh, Hama, uh, I think it's Hama Jao, who was doing something on Islamic finance which I find very, very exciting. I think Islamic finance is a cutting edge in, in global finance. I'm glad you guys are doing seminars on subjects like that. I wish I, I became young like you again and sat in a class to learn these things. So, so keep it up. I think this is real knowledge. It's not just the uh, last LMD, last minute day. Or, uh, that's not knowledge, man. You got to pass the exams, but you need real knowledge from real life practitioners with, with some experience. This is very important. And uh, to let you know, that you good as any students anywhere from Harvard, Oxford, or any other university. Uh, for some strange reason, maybe I'll send this to Chow. I went back to my valedictory speech in, on YouTube today. It was done in 1999 when uh, practically nobody believed in the possibility of authentic, useful university education in the Gambia. They thought it was a joke. But today, <laughs> Uh, I have colleagues working at the World Bank, IMF Islamic Development Bank. The Commissioner General GRA was my classmate. His deputy was the uh, managing director of NAWEC was. The environment minister, Lamin Diba, was my classmate. And uh, tons and tons of them, ambassadors, CEOs, even imams. We have Imam Ibn Dur in, 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 in uh, Ireland. We were classmates at the university. So yours is also a fledgling institution. Believe in it. You will make this university or break it. 
by your work, by your attitude, by your ethos, by what you do when you leave this university, so that you become a reference for an institution that's rooted in the sacred. And I believe in the end, at the end of the day, it's going to be the sacred that will triumph. Secularity will die. Kulja al wa zahaq al-batil. Inna al-batil akana zahuqa. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Well, appreciated, Mr. Sabali. I know you're very busy, so we will release you soon. Thank you once more. Jazakumullahu khairan. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.